Hey, baby, have you seen my keys? We need to go. It's, it's getting late. It's about time. I forget what time it is. What time is it? I don't even know what time it is. Where's my phone even? It's right there. Where's the keys? Right there. Right where? It's right there. I don't see it. It's on top of the, of the counter. It's right there. Just look for it. Oh, man. Okay, all right. We got the keys lit. Let's go. Wait a minute. I can't see anything. Do you know where my glasses are? I... <laughs> man. Oh, really? Ah, I hate when Where did you put them? I didn't put them anywhere. Just look really good. Come. I laid them right here. Look at yourself in the mirror. Why? I don't need my glasses. I don't need to look in the mirror. I don't got hair. I have to... I need my glasses. Get, see, now you're breaking my keys. Ah, oh, come on. Just look for your glasses. Touch your head or something. Why touch my head? I Just touch your head. Just do what I said. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oops. Turn right to stay on East 111th Avenue, then turn left onto Edge Lake Circle. Turn left onto Edge Lake Circle, then you will arrive at your destination. So this was a destination. How many times in life does it feel like you are going in a destination, but it's just locked. You missed it. You lost it. You were too late. It's frustrating when we can't find things or we go somewhere and it's supposed to be open, but it's locked and it just feels like you missed it. You lost your edge. And in our spiritual life, sometimes we get in the same, same boat. We're on a journey. We're on the road. We think we're getting the correct coordinates and correct guidance but it just seems like we lost our edge our passion is gone our our energy isn't the same what once was a hot fire for the lord is now kind of cooled down and a variety of things have kind of jumped in the way of it okay so we've been on this series of elisha the tale of ridiculous faith for the past four weeks this is the fifth week and so just a bit of the recap the first week we talked about killing the cows and burning the plows. We were in 1 Kings 19 as we looked at things that God calls us to give up and to leave in order to uh, commit to what he has us to do. Week number two, we got into 2 Kings chapter 3 and we talked about digging ditches. Digging ditches where God is the only one who can send the rain. God is the one that brings the victory, but he often asks us to do things and sometimes it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So it's dig ditches even when God sends the rain. Week number three, we looked at 2 Kings chapter four and the story of the widow who had two sons and she needed God's ridiculous provision. She was at the end of her rope and she was asked the question, well, what do you have? And at first she said, oh, I ain't got nothing. And then she said, well, I just got this little bit of oil. And we saw God's ridiculous provision where he asked us, for the little bit that we have, and he does the rest. Then last week, we were blessed to have uh, Dale and Bree McCombe come in, share with us about their uh, their life and about the mission that they are going to be on in Rwanda. Dale is a Rwandan genocide refugee survivor, and God has called him back to that very area to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We heard about God's provision and God's call and then this week, we're gonna look at a story that might be kind of crazy in 2 Kings chapter six. We look at the situation where this ax head, you know, the thing that you chop down wood with, this ax head made of iron ends up floating in the river when Elisha throws a stick in it. That's kind of crazy. I don't know about you, but that just seems like one of those crazy, like doo -doo 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 type moments. So let's get into the scripture. So open your Bible to Second Kings chapter six, or I, I have it here on my tablet. Um, Second Kings chapter six will be starting in verse one, go to verse seven. So one day a group of prophets came to Elisha and told him, as you can see, this place where we meet with you is too small. Let's go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of logs. Then we can build a new place for us to meet. All right, he told them, go ahead. Please come with us, someone suggested. I will, he said. So he went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. But as one of them was cutting a tree, his ax head fell into the river. Oh man, he cried, it was a borrowed ax. 
where did it fall, the man of God asked. When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water. And at that spot, the axe head floated to the surface. Grab it, he said. And the man reached out and grabbed it. It's interesting to me that there's no detail too small for God. And that he knows how to help you find what you didn't mean to lose. Now, that man cutting down the trees and building this place for the prophets to meet didn't mean to lose the, the axe head. And in fact, he can help you find what you didn't mean to lose. Later, we'll talk kind of metaphorically about this axe head here. Is, have I lost my spiritual edge? Like, for some of us, we are passionate about the Lord and if we're honest, we, we're getting it in with him. We, we're having daily devotions. We're, we're, we're studying God's word. It, it's coming alive to us. We, we are feeling connected in the, in the local church. Worship is something that we look forward to. We are looking for opportunities to share our faith with God. And if that's you, man, continue doing what you're doing. But I guarantee you, there are some of us here today that our edges become dull. And we might feel like this lumberjack that lost his ax head. And maybe it comes out like this where at one point I used to do fill in the blank and now I am, right? So maybe at one point you were around a lot of Christians and you were building with them and they were pouring into you, you were pouring into them. It was a healthy environment that, that sharpened your faith and now now you're not maybe for you 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 were regularly engaging in in church and regularly engaging in in Bible studies and meeting with other believers and now it's just like yeah, I'm tired I, I, I worked last night or I, I just got off of work or uh, scheduling just doesn't quite work out the way I would like to and I used to but now I'm Maybe at one time prayer was important, but now it's just something you do before eating a meal, maybe. Or maybe, maybe it was sharing your faith with other people, sharing what God has done in your life. And at one point it was 100. You, you were looking for opportunities for it, but now it's like, eh, why bother? It's, eh. You know, if someone asks me a question and asks about going to church, you know, I might take them and introduce them to the pastor. Or maybe at one time you were firm on your spiritual values, but now you have more questions and you're more wishy-washy about them because culture's been speaking in your ear loud. Or maybe the family was speaking in the other ear. Or maybe it's politics that are speaking loud in your ear and and your spiritual convictions are now just kind of like mm, you lost your edge you lost your passion it happens to a lot of people self-included the reality is this we have a spiritual enemy whose goal is to steal kill and destroy everything that is of God in your life and he will use whatever method, even things that are good, to get you off a of track, right? He will, he will try to distract you, to, to make you feel comfortable in a certain area or, or tempt you to go in a different area. And we get caught up in our spiritual sharpness, our spiritual passion, our spiritual desire just starts sputtering out. And it feels like an ax head that we didn't mean to lose, but we've lost it. You see, what we often do is we come into a relationship with Christ on fire, passionate. We might even be like some of those crazy people that are, are like Jesus freaks or what have you. And you threw away all the, the ungodly music and you burnt it up and now you got Jesus stickers on the back of your car and you have the Jesus t-shirts and um, you, you, you're at church all the time and then stuff just kind of kind of happens right so here's the thing at one time we were passionate and had our edge 
but now things have gotten dull. Maybe it could be like this. As a pastor, I could be a full-time pastor, but you know what? If I'm not careful, I'm a part-time follower of Christ. Or maybe, fellas, you could be a full-time daddy, but a part-time follower of Christ. Or ladies, you might be a full-time mother, but a part-time follower of Christ. Or maybe it is that you're a full-time worker and you're all in in your job, but part-time when it comes to the things of God. Or maybe you are a full-time community activist and, and now you're just kind of part-time with your faith. It's not that those things are bad, that, that being in the church, that engaging in work, that it, engaging in your family, that engaging in, in the community things, those aren't bad. But when we lose our full-time commitment to Christ, when it just kind of slips by the way, we lose what is most important. So there's two questions that we have to look at. Is what do you do when you're swinging away and your axe head falls off? The thing you don't mean to lose, you lose. And the second question is, how do I get it back? Well, first, we, we, we got to be flat out honest, right? In, in 2 Kings chapter 6, um, Elisha asked, where did it fall? One of my concerns is, personally, as well as a pastor, is that too often we get comfortable with what is normal for us. And what is normal for us is what we become, what becomes acceptable. Or what is normal in our culture is what becomes acceptable. So we, we gauge our spiritual temperature based upon the culture that is around us, based upon people who we know in church, and we do not base it on the things of God, not on God's word. And so our scale is off, our, our thermometer is off. We need to be honest. Is where we are at, is it acceptable to the Lord? Is it what he would call someone who is passionate, who is, who is, who is sharp, who is, who is 100 after him? But the honesty also means saying, well, where did I lose it? Where do we leave the accent? Where do we leave our passion? Maybe, maybe for you is one time you were you were praying daily. You would get up in the morning and you would read God's word. You were part of a devotion. Maybe, maybe you were utilizing you version and you were getting through the plan. And now all of a sudden, maybe you were sick at a certain point, or you were tired, or maybe somebody did you wrong and you were kind of pissed off about something. So you decide, well, I'm going to take a break from God's word. Maybe you left it there. Maybe, maybe for you, you used to come to church regularly and now you're just kind of like, well, it's cool that I come every once in a while. Or it's cool that I do it, I do it at home. And we've left what we need to be at. Maybe it's related to prayer. Maybe it's being involved with God's word with other believers outside of Sunday. So we need to be honest of where it fell. Pastor uh, Craig Rochelle said this, I started to care more about what others thought about my spiritual life than what I actually cared about my own spiritual life. For you, where has your spiritual sharpness fallen? And second, with God's help, we need to take it back. We need to take back what was lost. Second Kings chapter six, Verses 6 and 7 says, When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick, threw it into water at that spot, and the axe head floated up to the surface. Grab it, Elisha said. Then the man reached out his hand and grabbed it. With God's help, we need to lift it out. Just like what we've been talking about before, only God can send the water. But he will ask you to dig a ditch. Only God can multiply the oil, but he wants you to gather the jars. And only God can make the axe head float, but you need to reach out and grab it. You see, Satan will whisper in your ear and will tell you, you know what? It's too late. You've done too much. Nobody cares about you anymore. You've been gone too long. Don't pay attention.
attention to them. You're okay. And he will whisper those things in your ear to get you to stay in that place of not being where God wants you to be. But you've got to go get it and it takes initiative. One of the things that is imperative in walking with Christ is taking initiative with it. Too often we just kind of sit back and expect everything to happen for us when God says, you know what, you go gather jars, you go dig the ditches, you go reach out your hand and grab it. And sometimes things don't make a whole lot of sense, like a floating ax head made of iron, that makes absolutely no sense. But God will ask you to go grab it. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense why we, why we come to church all the time consistently. But I guarantee you there is a spiritual meaning behind that. And it begins to sharpen your faith. Getting in God's word consistently. Sometimes it, it's like, man, I mean, if we're honest, we're like, why? I mean, well, this is kind of like crazy but there's a part about us taking initiative to engage the things of God so here's the deal you need to take initiative even when you don't feel like it you know God answers prayer so we need to pray even when we don't feel like it even when we're tired we gotta we gotta pray we know that God inhabits the praise of his people and sometimes we don't feel like praising and worshiping sometimes we're like oh there's only one or two other people here but we need to praise God not because there's one or two other people here but because God deserves it sometimes we need to worship him even when we're tired and we don't feel like it. we have to lay that down and worship the Lord so initiative means we do action based upon the truth of what we know about God in the face of how we feel. Will you take initiative? Will you take that step towards finding and grabbing that accent, towards getting your spiritual edge and passion back? Re Revelation 2 verses 4 and 5 says this, but I have this complaint against you, says the Lord. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. If you want what you had at first, you need to do what you did at first. We need to repent. Repentance is simply this, a very visual picture. It's this, we're going this way and it's turning and going the opposite direction. My fear is that in our religious comfort zones, we lose what it means to repent. We lose what it means to be truly sorry in our souls that we make an effort, we take initiative to turn from that which we were doing which means sometimes we, we have to go through some stuff when we do that. Sometimes our family and friends aren't number one anymore and we have to tell mama, daddy, our friends, no, I can't go to whatever, whatever, because I need to be in the house of the Lord. Or maybe repentance means I'm no longer gonna surrender my heart to how I feel in my attitude of the day and I'm gonna press in and worship God with everything I have. Maybe you need to repent from sleeping too much. Maybe you need to repent from your attitudes. Maybe you need to repent from people that you are surrounding yourselves with and you need to start surrounding yourselves with other people. Maybe you need to repent from, I'm just waiting and see what happens and say, God, I am sorry. I am not grabbing what you've already provided me with. So the conclusion is this. God wants you to live a life filled with passion, sharpness, eagerness to follow him. And he desires that among everything. I heard this weekend this illustration of, uh, of a guy saying that he was riding sin on the beach and wanted to do this illustration of God's waves coming to, and removing sin. And before he could write the word sin out, the wave would come and erase it. And he kept trying and kept trying. And God was telling him that his grace so much abounds that even before sin can be written out, his grace is there waiting on 
the repentance. Brothers and sisters, family, please hear my heart. We are not designed to be wishy-washy, ho-hum, same stuff, just a different day, Christians living in this world. No, we are designed to be people who are sharp, who is passionate for the things of the Lord, even in our different characters and our different personality, but still passionate for the things of God. The question is for you, are you that? If you are, continue putting in those things that are getting you in that spot. If you're not, if you found yourself in a hiccup or, or a pause moment or just, just a, a slump down position, remember where you lost it. Be honest with yourself and reach back and grab it. Maybe, maybe you've never made a decision to follow Christ in your life. Today can be that point where you simply say to God, God, I don't get it all, but I know I need you. I need you in my life and I want to follow you. Will you have the guts? Will you have the boldness? Will you take the initiative to take that step to follow Christ wholeheartedly? I love y'all. Can't wait to see you guys very soon. We'll continue this conversation Wednesday at Connect. God bless.